Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is going to be an amazing day. We are in day two of Hanukkah. We're going to look at the third fruit of Holy Spirit. And today, we're going to look at the prophecy of Messiah in Isaiah 9. As we get closer to December 25th, I'm going to do the Nativity story that week leading up to it. And you will absolutely love that. But today we get to get into the prophecy of Messiah coming. And we're going to do one of the next candles. And I don't have my big menorah with me because it's so big. It's on the table. Last night, we watched what we're doing each night of Hanukkah is watching either history teachings videos each night. And then I have uh, Rich is reading Galatians 5, 22, 23. And so last night we lit the middle candle, the love of God, sending Jesus Christ, the Son of God to the world because he so loved the world and that love is in us. And then we lit the second candle. And that, of course, was joy, that the joy of our salvation because of Christ Jesus and uh, we let Matthew light the candles, and then we all, then Rich led us in prayer. And so tonight we're going to light the third candle, and we're going to rejoice in God's peace. And Rich is going to read Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. And so I'm going to get into Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 in just a moment. Hey, Amanda, God bless you. So today, before we get into Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, I'm just going to pray as we enter into this Hanukkah message. Amen. God, we rejoice at your truth. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for grace, God, and that it abounds in and upon us. And we give you praise, glory, and adoration, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So Galatians 5, 22 and 23 are the nine fruits of Holy Spirit. And we're doing that when we're lighting the menorah each and every night. Love and joy were last night. Tonight will be peace. Our readings will be Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. So let me refresh you with Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within accomplishes, is love, joy, peace, patience, and even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So I'm going to talk about the nine fruits of Holy Spirit, reading those again, Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within accomplishes, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so we're going to look at today peace, which the Hebrew word is shalom. Amen. So tonight when we light the candle, we're going to have the Bible reading of Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. So let me get to Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. I absolutely love Isaiah 9, 7. It has been one of my favorite scriptures for decades. I told Rich, if we ever had a church, for whatever reason, on this earth, like all the ministries that we've done, Isaiah 22, 22, Zechariah 2, 5, our present, my present ministry, God's Firewall, which is www.godsfirewall.com. And then, of course, if we ever had a church, and of course, let me not forget Table It, which is tableit.org, the health and wellness ministry, that scripture is Joel 2, 26, and it explains it all on the website. If we ever had a church, I would name it Isaiah 9, 7 and have it written in Hebrew. It is phenomenal. So let's look at Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 out of the Amplified Classic. And if you want to do this tonight with you and your family, absolutely do it. And if you don't have a menorah, do a makeshift menorah. Just get nine candles and put them together and have the middle candle assigned as the servant candle, the helper, the attendant, and then light the candles from the, starting from the end and just start working day by day. And so the second night, the third candle lit, we're going to have it 
titled The Candle of God's Peace. Shalom. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, the prophecy of Messiah in the Amplified Classic. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Now, let me read verses 6 and 7 of Isaiah 9 one more time. And even before we get to that, let me just start with verse 1. Because again, this is a foreshadowing of the nativity story. It is showing that there are those in great darkness. And that as I talked about at the very beginning, the fragmented soul, that God brings wholeness and healing to where his name dwells as he integrates those fragmented places of our soul, knowing each of the fruits of Holy Spirit. And we're going to see that really revealed in Isaiah 9, verses 1 through 7. It is beyond phenomenal. And you're going to see the Holy Spirit bringing light in the darkest places of your soul to know truth, love, joy, and peace as we look at these first three fruit. And so we're going to get into the Hebrew word for peace. And it's much larger than you could ever imagine. And Before we get into the Hebrew word for peace, but let me go ahead and pull up in the Strong's Concordance, Isaiah 9, just to have it ready, and we'll do peace in just a minute. Isaiah 9, verses beginning with 1, but in the midst of judgment, there is a promise, and the certainty of the Lord's deliverance, here it is, aren't you excited, and there shall be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, the Lord brought into the contempt the land of Zebulun and the na- land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make it glorious by the way of the Sea of Galilee beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of intense darkness and the shadow of death upon them. The light has shined. Who's the light? It is my personalized tag, which I love. John 1, 4. In him was life, and that life is the light of men. And so, let me go further. I'm going to go to verse 3, and I'm going to read to verse 7. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nation and increased their joy. See, this is the joy candle that we also lit yesterday. They rejoice before you. Like the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil of battle. For the yoke of Israel's burden and the staff or rod for goading their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as in the day of Gideon with Midian. For every tramping warrior's boots and all his armor in the battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. Why? There's no more war. God, through Jesus Christ, has brought peace. We see this as well as Isaiah 40, verses 1 and 2. Verse 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Woo! Hallelujah. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice, with righteousness from the latter time forth forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Oh my goodness. Is this not amazing? Isaiah 9 verses 1 and 2, that the world before Jesus was in utter darkness because of sin nature and the kingdom of the world ruled in that state with no door to heaven. 
It was shut until the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, hallelujah, Jesus Christ himself, came to earth. He is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life to the Father. Good morning, Kim and Amy and Tina. He is our peace. And upon the government of God, which increases in our spiritual walk, as we have love and joy, you see the love and joy coming in. We did love and joy last night on the servant candle, love on the first candle to light with that servant candle, joy. And then we're going to light tonight the candle signifying Jesus being the Prince of Peace. And that that peace of God rules our heart. He has left us, John 14, 27, an undisturbed peace. He gives to you a peace, not as the world gives to you. Hallelujah. But he gives to you a peace that is everlasting and unending, eternal, that brings the increase of God's government in your life. No matter your circumstance, no matter your trial. Let that be your reality. Amen. So let's get into some of the Hebrew words for Isaiah 9. I want to get into the government of God and, of course, peace, the Prince of Peace. And so Jesus would bring a new government, Isaiah 9, 6. And this word is Misra, and it means empire. See, Jesus brought the empire, the government of God of heaven. That is why when Jesus sent the disciples out to preach, he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God, the kingdom, because it was a new kingdom that the world had not known. The kingdom of God, an empire, a government, and it comes from the Hebrew word, which we did yesterday, Saul which means to persevere, to contend, to have power, to prevail. We see this reflected in Genesis 32 with Jacob as Jacob is wrestling with the angel of the Lord and the angel let him go when he prevailed. And I've got that amazing teaching that I preached in South Carolina in 2011 and I'll try to get that up on my Facebook wall it is phenomenal. That has always gotten to me. In fact, we'll look at that right now so you can understand this prevailing power that when you feel like giving up, oh my goodness, there is a prevailing power through the peace of God that will bring you victory on every front. Amen. Genesis 32, we see in relation to Jacob wrestling with the angel. And Jacob wrestled with the angel, as we see it, Genesis 32, verse 26, <clears throat> verse 25. And when the man, the angel of the Lord, saw that he did not prevail. And let's start in verse 24. And Jacob was left alone at the river Jabbok. Remember, Jabbok means to empty out. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. And so this is an angel of the Lord that he's wrestling with. And when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh and Jacob's thigh was put out of joint when he wrestled with him. So let's look at this and what this means. God showed me many years ago as I asked him, I said, God, when you wrestle with man, you win every time. I don't understand this. And he said, Robin, this is not that. This is prevailing. And we'll actually get to this particular. Let's go ahead and get to this particular word in Genesis 32, verse 25. And God said, Robin, imagine those mechanical bulls. I said, okay. He said, on the mechanical bull, it's not about the bull rider overcoming the bull. It's about him hanging on. <laughs> It is about him holding on. It is about him contending until the buzzer rings, until it's time. That's what happened with Jacob. As he held on, he persevered, 
and he didn't let go of God. And because of that, God blessed him. He gave him peace. Shalom, where he came into the call as Israel. Ooh, don't you feel that in Jesus' name, the anointing. And so this word prevailed right here is yakol, which we did call yesterday. And it means power, prevail. It means to attain. It means to endure. That's what it means to do. It means to endure. It means to keep holding on. And when you feel like quitting, you just keep holding on. When you're sitting in Isaiah 9, 1, darkness, or even worse, Isaiah 9, 2, the valley of death, of deep darkness, you can't quit. You got to hold on because the Son of God is about to bring the government of God, heaven, the kingdom of heaven, and you're going to enter the power thereof and know how it is in heaven and the false reality that your fragmented soul has misinterpreted is going to break off. That yoke is going to break and you're going to know the kingdom of heaven. And as in my new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, which I pray is out by May of next year, you're going to see the kingdom of heaven on earth. I'm telling you, it is so clear and you're going to seize it. What God has planned for you, like Joseph, like David, like Esther. They had to be purified to see the plan of God for their lives. Amen. And so, when we look at Genesis 32, when he held on to the angel and he prevailed, verse 25, he touched the hollow of the star and it was put out of joint when he wrestled with him. And so, what is that? That is how they did contracts in the old days. When Abraham sent his servant to go find a wife for Isaac, he grabbed the thigh and the servant grabbed his thigh because it's the strongest muscle in the body. And so in the ancient days, that was a signification or signifying that they entered into a contract, that it could not be broken. And so when the angel of the Lord touched Jacob's thigh and he became Israel and even in verse uh, 26, and he said, let me go for day is breaking. The angel said that, but Jacob said, I will not let you go until you declare a blessing on me, upon me. And then the angel of the Lord asked Jacob, what is your name? And in shock, because Jacob's been changed. He's not conniver, trickster, swindler, which Jacob means in Hebrew. He says, the angel of the Lord says, no longer shall your name be I uh, Jacob, but your name shall be Israel because you have power with God and with man. Jacob changed because he held on to God and he didn't let go. And he got God's plan as it is in heaven on earth for his life. And so, that covenant, that limp, Jacob limping was a visible sign that he was in covenant with God. Is that not powerful? And so as we return back to Isaiah 9 and we go to Isaiah 9, 6, we're going to look at peace, which generally is shalom. And we're going to look at Jesus being the prince of peace. Shalom. It is shalom here. And it means, now this is what you've got to get into your knower that just like salvation means whatever you have need of, you get it. God's providing for it. That's also what peace indicates. Peace, shalom means welfare, health, prosperity, peace. It means where there is imbalance, there's God's going to bring homeostasis, which is going to be exceedingly above all that you can think or imagine, Ephesians 3.20. It means welfare. It means rest. It means well. It means whole. It means safe. When we look at the four Hebrew letters, they are sheen, which is jagged teeth, meaning to consume in the positive. Lamed, which is a cattle goad and looks like a shepherd's staff with a prick in the curvature and means tongue, control, and authority. And then vav, which is a tent peg, a nail. It means to add and secure. And then mim, which is a three-humped looking m, which is water. And it means to flood and massive in the positive. So the word picture for shalom, for peace, 
is the consuming tongue of God that brings authority, adding and securing it to you as he massively floods you. This is us being the temple of the Lord. Is that not absolutely phenomenal? And so as we end today, I'm going to read one more time the scriptures that we're going to read tonight for our lighting of the third candle, which will be for the fruit of peace for the Prince of Peace himself. Isaiah 9 verses 1 through 7, Amplified Classic. But in the midst of judgment, there is a promise and the certainty of the Lord's deliverance. And there shall be no gloom for her who was in anguish in the former time. The Lord brought her into the contempt in the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make it glorious. By the way of the Sea of Galilee, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of intense darkness and the shadow of death, upon them the light shined. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you like the joy in harvest as men rejoice when they divide the spoil of the battle. For the yoke of Israel's burden and the staff or rod for goading their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as in the day of Gideon with Midian. For every tramping warrior's war boots and all his armor in the battle, tumult, and every garment rolled in blood shall be burned up in the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow briefly.